God. Praise God again. Before we sit down, I uh, just like to uh, share something media team kindly uh, put on the screen. The book of Exodus chapter 33, verse 14 to 15. Just before you take your seats. Um, can you put it in King James Version? Allow me to read from my Bible as you check on the screens. <laughs> so I'll begin at verse 14. And it says, And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said unto him, If your presence go with me, carry us not from here. Let me finish with verse 16. Sorry. For how shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight? Is it not in what you go with us? So shall we, so shall we be separated, I and your people, from all people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord said unto Moses, Kinley, take these words to heart. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing, also that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you, you by name. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, we thank you and you glorify your name, Father God, for who you've been in our lives. Lord, we say thank you, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, for it is not by our works, Lord God Almighty, that we can stand this day. It is not by anything that we have done, Father God, the things that we have brought together, Father God, in peace and beats, Father God, and presented to you, Father, and said, Father God, that because of this, tomorrow we shall stand. Father, it is your grace. It has taken your hand, Father God, for us to be here this day, dear Lord God Almighty. And as we have sung and, and, and prayed and read about, Father God, it is only by your presence that, Father God, we are nothing. We are just men, Father God, nothing whatsoever. But Lord God Almighty, you saw it fit, Father God, for us to be in your likeness, Father God. That Lord God Almighty, you placed your own spirit inside our hearts. That the word says, Father God, that our inner man is strengthened by the spirit of God. And Lord God Almighty, Father God, there are broken hearts in this place. Lord God Almighty, there are people who are praying, Father God, for that touch, Lord. And Lord God Almighty, for we know, dear Lord God Almighty, by your word that you say, that where three, two or three are gathered by your name, your presence is there. Lord, just as the people of the Israelites, Father God, did not go forward, Father God, when your presence was there, Father. Let it be the same for us. Lord, we are coming not to search for wealth and material gain. Lord, we just want to touch your helm of your clock. Father God, Father, may it be straight in our hearts that it is all about you. Father, as we listen to your word today, Father, I pray, Father God, that you should not harden our hearts, Father God. That as your word comes in, Father God, just as you say to the church of Ephesus, that you stand at the door and knock. That, Father, it shall be known about this church, Father God, that when you knock at this door, Lord, we shall open and we shall have a dine with you. That it is all about you now, Lord, and not about us. Let us remove this selfish ambition about self in our hearts and minds, Father God, and remember that, we die, that you died for us. That was selfless, Father God, and that we live selflessly for you. For is the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. I have any son, and I make work a kidogo. So the the song that uh, is going to be ministering to us today is Jesus loves this I know. Jesus loves me this I know. Iyo ne likuwa pale. Sorry for misleading you. Pole any son. Ero yangu metaka tu kuimbo yo imbo. Aya. Let's go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him. Personalize it, personalize it. It's your song. Share yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. 
Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him below. They are weak, but He is strong. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. One last time. One last time. Yes, Jesus. Actions. Church in actions. One last round. For the Bible tells me so. He to wants to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, worship team. You can have your seats as you also take your seats. So this is the only place that you'll realize you have a talent to sing. Si kwa shawa peke yake. So kama umaini uliza kama na imbanga yu umeona, I can clearly sing. Ah, so, um, because you'll be studying so much about the scriptures today, um, like how it has been all this time. Um, I would like to make sure that I finish what uh, God prepared for you guys. Um, and I don't want to rush, so I'm just going to go straight at it. Um, but first things first, ni vizuri kuji tambulisha. Ositue nani pale inje. Ama ksks, ama we. So uh, my name is James Kimani, Gitao. Um, also known as Kimu. Uh, today I'm the one who's going to be delivering the word of God to you. And I really hope that you are ready. Are you ready? Ready to hear from God? Um, also another disclaimer that I'd like to let you know. Uh, the person standing here is a man. I can lie. That's the truth. I can change my mind. But the, person's, the person that I'm bringing the word for, he cannot lie and he can never change. So don't think about me as Kim when I stand here. Leave everything you know about me and just take the words as they come. If they are not my words, that's why I'll, I'll want to stick on scripture. They are God's words. Sawa sawa? And as it has been, it is about the presence of God. Everything that is around us, everything that is happening is always about the presence of God. But first of all, we, do know, we need to know about this God. So I'm introducing my topic for the day. Christ is supreme. That will be the topic, what we shall be del delving on the next 45, 40 minutes. Um, Christ is supreme. And uh, we are going to be expounding on these three questions. One is, who is Christ? Uh, second question, why he came? Third question, his importance in our daily living. So we're going to be looking at Christ Jesus. And kama weni kama mimi, wecha ni kusaidia vinyo utapanga. Speaker, James Kimani, topic, who Christ is supreme, dots, who is Christ, why he came, and his importance in our daily living. Then, najua po chini mnandikanga main reading, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Um, you can just project it media team. We want to get some basis on things. So uh, I know if I just go around, which I'm not going to do because of time, if I go around just asking questions, I uh, ask you, who is Christ? You already know who Christ is, right? You already have an idea who Christ is. Ukweli ama wongo. Asante sana. So um, we all have an idea. So I'm going to briefly, hey, briefly, rush through some of the points that I have. Um, and I know there are going to be others that maybe I might have left out because you all have encountered Christ differently. Um, maybe some, we also, we also read in uh, high school and primary school, if you did see a real early drop, so uh, first one is, we know he is the son of God that we can see um, in a popular scripture that we all know about, that is John chapter three, verse 16. Then we know that he is also the savior, comes from the same chapter. 
we know that he is the redeemer we know he is kings the king of kings and the lord of lord he know he's also called emmanuel meaning god with us but today we're going to be studying a different thing one among the attributes of christ jesus and who he is so media team you can bring this uh bring this um scripture on the screens i'm going to be using king james version i promise if you want to to give you nyamaze to change version i don't uh let's see to the summer to pamoja uh colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 23 we are all there so uh, let's start for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or powers all things were created by him for him verse 7 and he is before all things and by him all things are held together and he is the head of the body the church who the firstborn from dead he might have the preeminence for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now have been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature who is under heaven of which i paul am made a minister so uh first question number one who is christ jesus the bible says that he is the image of the invisible god so we are going to be looking at this attribute and we are going to answer question one uh, and answer b with the answer to a so answer a to your a will be what is going to be corresponding to the rest of the answers and then the rest of the questions that's our so we are starting by saying that uh, verse 15 it says who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation so christ is the image of the invisible god the bible still says um that still he is god in the book of john chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was there and the word was with and the word was who is the word Who's the word? Who's the word? Ah, tunasonga pamoja. Okay, so in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was. And then verse 14, media team, come on, is that the idea? If we go to verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word became what? And dwelt upon Abon. So the word is who? But we know that we can't separate the triune. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we start seeing the supremacy of Christ, pole pole. So we also know that he is the firstborn of all creation. Based on what, on what we have read uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, is that God is, uh, Christ is the image of the invisible God, and he is the firstborn of all creation. When you go to verse 16, he says, for by him. Now I want you to understand that everything comes after Christ. Everything comes after Christ. That's why it is very, um, it's very absurd to hear people say that I want nothing to do with Christ because you have missed it all it is him who comes first then everyone comes next he is the firstborn and there is a reason as to why things were done that way because you know god is a god of order so 
we read again in verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or all things were uh, or all things were created by him and for him. Now, when we start searching for things that are in him, when we are out of him, we are out of the equation. Everything happens for a reason. Still, to me, so much of a basic one plus one is equals to two. There is no way you can have one plus one equals to three, or one plus one equals to zero. The variable that was used was wrong. Now, we need to understand it from the beginning that everything was created from Him. So, if you're looking for things on earth and outside earth, in the world to come and in the world we are in, it is only through Christ. You have to be connected. We have to understand that there is someone who is above you. You will never go above. And where the generation that you are living right now is the generation of I am a God. The God, yeah, G-O-D, the big God. We have been sold to the impression and sold to the beliefs that we can actually survive without God. That we can only... Ask God to come in when we start things. No, it starts from the beginning. God, I can't stand before your people and say things. Because if I say my own things, I will destroy your sons and your daughters. It is him. He's the one who gives you the privilege. He's the one who actually gives you every single thing you need. And at this moment, I want to, I'd like to pause because I have realized I've not done one thing. I am here because uh, of uh, Bishop Jimmy Kimani. It's a privilege to stand before you guys. And also uh, Pastor Alice, Pastor Beatrice, and Pastor Brian all, all, all know that I'm standing here. So I would like to just acknowledge them. This is a privilege to actually stand here. But I want you to, rem to remember as we continue now, it is that Christ is supreme. Everything comes after him. If you try to wrestle and work your way above Christ, one thing that you're actually doing is you're grieving the Spirit of God because they are all the same. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. You have to understand that you're coming to join in to something that has already been done. We are going to get to the point where Christ said that he's on the cross and he says that it is finished. Father, I commit my spirit to you. Everything was done from the very first thing to the last thing. So we have said that uh, uh, Christ is the image of the invisible God. Uh, he's the firstborn of all creation. By him, all things were created. Uh, the image, other, other words that you can, uh, other things to represent what I'm trying to say is, he is the exact representation of God. So when you see Christ, you have seen who? And how do you see Christ? If we have concluded that Christ is the word, then you have to meditate and look at that word. The book of James chapter 1 gives us a very interesting uh, 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 perspective. Um, James chapter 1 verse 21, 23. I want to show you something. I want to show you how, why it is really important to actually delve in the word. Why you just need to stay with it. King James Version, Tafadali, because uh, I'm actually using King James Version. Uh, so James chapter 1, verse 24, um, says, uh, verse 21 to 23, it says, For if any be a hearer of, of verse 21, sorry, therefore put away all filthiness and extreme wickedness and receive, the, uh, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, receiving deceiving our own selves. Um, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his nature, natural face in a mirror. Now I want you to understand that the Bible gives us a very perfect image. It does not talk about somebody who does not read the Bible. It talks about somebody who reads the Bible, who doesn't do, and who does. Now the idea of not reading the Bible is no, nowhere in the Bible. In what we have read, there is no such thing as I am just going to pray and God is going to grant me. The idea here being shared is that we are already uh, supposed to be reading the Bible. 
Now there are two examples, one who does and one who doesn't. Now understand that the person who actually just uh, reads and not, doesn't do the word, uh, doesn't do what the word of God says, he's just like a person who has a meanda ivi form kidogo, na hata kumbuki vile anaka. The person who reads the word and does it is a person who goes out and remembers everything. You know why you remember everything? Because you are grafted and founded on someone. That is the reason. You will remember who you are and who, what it took for you to actually look the way you are by understanding the scriptures, by understanding and reading the word and doing it you will never forget that Christ died on the cross, however things are. You will never forget that even despite the situation that I'm in right now, God proved it the first time, he'll do it the second time, the third time. Whatsoever thing comes, he shall do it again. I am speaking, for the, I'm speaking about the situations that you're in that you can't talk about, that you don't find anybody to actually say to. There's one person who will listen to you and will never judge. He has not condemned you, and he will never condemn you. As a matter of fact, he has sowed by his word. Have you read it in scripture that he says he could not find anyone to sow the words with? As in Hage Swear Nam Tumungine, he decided to put his word on the line, and he sweared by himself. That is the God we serve. That is Christ Jesus, the one that we come and cry to every single day. Believe us. That is one person that will never tell, tell anything concerning you to somebody else. That is one person that will never, ata kuangusha bees, ati unangoja something to happen in life, alafu mjama anaenda anaribu tu kitu. Unajua ile kitu moja kaneka ngo alafu kila kitu inaribika. Christ that I fanya kitu kama hiyo. And this is the reason as to why we need to understand these things. We need to stay in his word. Stay in his word. The idea is not for you to lose how you look. So, Tumesha break history. Tumesha, tumesha, tumesha anza tuki sema history. We cannot be Christians who do not read the word. That is one thing that we need to put outside first. Sawa, sawa. Now we're talking about two people. Who, the one who reads the word and does not do it, and the one who reads the word and does it. So at, at this point, I want you to understand that the word of God is a must to read. Sawa, sawa. Like there is no way you can, you, you can run away from it. And if you are not reading the word of God, I am not here to condemn you. I am here to tell you, let's start. Sawa, sawa. You can start today. You don't really need to read the whole, uh, easy books ni 66, easy books ni mingi sana. You do not have to start reading chapter by chapter. Just find the word of God. God will communicate you with that word. And be systematic with it. If it is every single day, one hour, do it systematically. God will reward you. Hey, media team, sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I want to show you something. I want to show you how important it is to actually stay in the words of God. And after this, we are going to go to the next question. Uh, why he came? Hebrews chapter... So, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, King James Version, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now, remember, uh, based on the book of Romans, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Now, we are to Nambio to Nasasa, but without faith, you see the combination, the, co the connection. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is. That is the first thing. You have to believe. But faith is the first thing that started. But then you have to believe that he is. And I want to show you something else that uh, is very important. That's why Nasema, be systematic with your reading of your word. It says, and that he is a rewarder of them that does what? Does what? Diligently seek him. Now, we need to understand that God only comes when he is seeked. Don't sleep on your Bible. high school, campus and expect that it is going to get there from diffusion, with using the process of diffusion, from a high concentration to a low concentration. No, it does not work like that. You have to be systematic with it, intentional, diligently. Christ diligently went on the cross. We all know that. He went on the cross diligently. So we need to do that the same way. There is no difference. Lazima uh, tufanyeivyo. So the next question, um, why he came? 
one of the things that we do know from scripture or well, well, it's CRE, I did CRE. These are the things that we used to study about uh, Christ Jesus. He came to deliver us from the chains of bondage. He came to heal us. He came to save the brokenhearted. He came to, um, what else did he come to do according to the book of Luke? It's to set the captives free. Thank you so much. You know, so you're going to be looking at but today we're going to be looking at a different attribute. From the same, same book, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, he's the same person who just to taking a different uh, route to actually take this home. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, if you could just go back there, media team, I will really appreciate. So Colossians chapter 1 from verse 19 and 21. We have just read it. I want us to read it again as we answer this question. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. So verse 19 says, Excuse, um, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having, verse 20, kindly let's read together uh, verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Verse 21, and you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet he has reconciled. Now, the reason as to why uh, we want to look into this uh, a verse, portion of us is portion of his scripture is because of verse 21. It says, You were once alienated and enemies in your mind. Now, this takes us back to what happened in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, where now Eve is tricked with the, with the devil, and both Adam and Eve fall because we are also Adam. Ali, piga baiti yake, sindio? Na walikuwa pamoja, wakipiga tu ma, maraundi muenda, tuko kwa den of Eden. Waka upata na devo, devo waka watrik, na wote waka kwa shida. And now, what, uh, where it all started is after Adam ate, his eyes were opened, and now everything and every, consequences, the, every consequence that God said began unfolding, sindio? Now, that is where now the flesh was corrupted. That is the exact place where the flesh was corrupted. The reason as to why a secret. Kama si, kama if you're not there, let me use myself as an example. Unazile matai mkathot kana kujanga, mtu wame kukanyanga, tu umevaa tu white shoes. Umetembea kutoka zima, na yoma topea zima, ukafika tao, viatu zikiwa safi. Alafu kuna mjamatu fulani, kwa sababu tu ya chai, tea break, hamepita na wewe na kukanyanga na matope. God on, But ile thought inaonga number 19 huko. Ile wizi sema, unajua? That thought comes because of Adam. It is because of the flesh was corrupted. And that will never change. And that's why when you come to God, when you come to Christ, you are continually washed. It is a process of sanctification. That's why Paul says that imitate me as I imitate Christ. It is a daily process. Last time when I was here, I said, Kama mwokoka ukiwa, um, for instance, if you are 45 kgs na uliokoka na target yako ni kufika 65 kgs, manze ita happen hivi. Ati manze God, my prayer has been, eh, nataka tu kufika 65 kgs. God, you know, prayer yangu. Or it might be vice versa. And if you come up and say that God is the answer, Christ is the answer, when you come up and you 45 kg, you are in the Nothing changes. Everything in God is a process. Sawa, sawa. That's the same thing with our mind. That's why Romans chapter 12 says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. Transformation only happens by the renewing of your mind. That is the only way you can actually test and approve. You cannot test and approve the will of God without you having been in this process of renewal of your mind. You can only, you can only test, test the, the will, the perfect will of God. This also answer the, answers the question, what is the will of God in my life? This is it. Constant renewal of your mind. And how you renew your mind is by reading the word of God. There is no shortcut. When you kai chini, one scriptures, one and you know, everything, and you do not put it into practice in your heart and in your mind, it will never morph into you. Haita transform. Transformers ni wongo. Hakuna vile gari ta change tu ikuwe mtu mwingine. That does not happen in this realm that you are living. Unajua ni ukuweli, sindiwa? You don't just change. It happens gradually. God is a God of order. Kwa sababu kiruka step one, ile te mutanza kumenta mtu, uyo, uyo, uyo menti, ataruka yo step Unajua in a happen even as the generations 
progress. That is exactly what is going to be happening in your lives. Every single generation will be missing that one step. And upon the devil at our part. Because the Bible says that do not give the devil a foothold. Yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, this is enough for him. Such a mwanya. Nona hii mwanya na fikiria ni mkono inaingia. Ya naingia na mgu. Na naingia full. It might be a joke, but that's the truth. Any small crack for him, ah, it's a big opportunity. And he is going to exploit it and he'll exploit it well. Sawa, sawa, turudi. And so why Christ came is because our minds were alienated from God. Our minds, everything about us was corrupted because of Adam. We need to understand that first. See, see brother, sister, mom, dad, siku obaya. Manzi, you thought in kujanga kwa sababu hivyo ndo tuko. Satu do. That is how it is. It is because of Adam. That's why that thought is there. But you have to give yourself into the process of God for him to continually sanctify you. This is not to justify you that Kimu alisema, unajua ni mekanyanga kwa sabu Kimu alisema na sasa sasa ntafanya nini, sini Adam. Don't start using that. That is wrong. Sawa, sawa. I want you to understand where we are. Because as we answer this question, we start identifying ourselves. Uh, so, uh, media team kindly give us the book of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 to 7. Uh, give us in King James Version. As we try and wrap this uh, last question, second last question, Isaiah chapter 53, uh, verse 1 to 7. But, no, sorry, by verse 6 to 7, uh, it says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Who you are talking about here is Christ Jesus. Before, uh, verse 6, what, uh, what was being spoken about in verse 6 is uh, us, sheep. We all went astray. At some point in life, all of us just decided to go all our other ways before Christ Jesus came. Now, why Christ Jesus came, he came so that he, he, came so that he can actually bring us back to where we left. To look at me to Rudi Sasa. Sasa. So we had already left, and now Christ is trying to bring us back in. Not trying, he actually did it. It is just for us to actually choose. So he has, he's bringing us back to where we are supposed to be with our Father. And he, as he did it, he did it in the most humble, hum, the humblest way. In the most humble way. He did not speak, he did not fight, he did not do anything. He was rejected, and yet he alikubali. Mimi hamnitaki ni sawa but I'll still go ahead and do it. The best story, I keep on repeating this, because this is the best way you can actually show love. The best picture of love is when Christ Jesus told God, manze God, toa hii kaf. Itoe, manze siwezi. Okay, kisema hawezi. But toa hii stuff. We understand the, uh, uh, the agony that he was in. And then when he goes back, and then he comes back to the same prayer, he says, but if it is according to your will, that is the best picture of love that we can ever find in life. To a place that umse ameona, hakuna njie ngine, but kwa sabu ni nawapenda, I would rather go through all that. And he knew what he was going to face. It was said in the book of Isaiah that these things are the, if us to nas, each chapter to nasoma saizi, if you go and read um, the, the, the final excerpt of 52 to 53 towards, I guess, verse 27, you're going to get the clear picture. We don't have that time to actually get into that. Not to kumaliza everything. We are going to get the clear picture about how each and every single thing was done. He did it because he loves you. Let me say it again. Somebody needs to understand that they are loved. He did it because he loves us. Mimi siju the last time uliambio I love you. In the same I love you, Lea. I am talking about the real love. This is real love. I'm not saying that is fake. Hey, hey. Don't misquote me. I am talking about the real love that made us all exist up to date. God loves you. Don't look for the world. Don't look for the things and the ideas of the world to love me so that I can actually be validated. That is not God. 
That is not the works of God. God loves you. Ukitafuta validation or usipotafuta, just know God loves you. I am I am here to tell you because I think there is something that might be coming to someone. God loves you. And I know want you to understand it that he loves you. And the fact that he, it is not a just a standard thing that hey manzi my child I love you. He loves you and he cares about every detail. Every detail when you uliamka when you uli dress up every single how you think he cares about. That's why we are constantly convicted when something wrong happens because there is someone who loves you. Sawa sawa. Ah, uh, Isaiah chapter same chapter verse 10 and 11 media team. We have 15 minutes. Uh, verse 10 and 11. So verse 10 says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when he when when you shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring he shall prolong his days and the will of the lord shall prosper in his hands he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities god crushed his own son i know this is sad to to read He crushed his own his own son. That is how he chapter he verse not twinges into the story. We are getting into the deep end. He crushed him because he wanted to do that so that he could justify the others. So me and you why we are justified by God is because God crushed Jesus. It is a beautiful and a sad story at the same time. But imagine at the end of it all the result is a beautiful result. For one everybody came in. That is you and me. So this is to answer why he came. He came so that he could bring us back to the Father. And there is no one else who can actually take us back to the Father. And I will pause here and bring up a statement as we go to uh, to the last question. The last question is a bit heavy but tarakisha kidogo. So in the generation that we are living in right now, we are constantly being bombarded left, right and center with people who are trying in life. I'm going to repeat it. We are constantly being bombarded left right and center with people who are trying in life. I'm going to give you the the the, fini- the end of the statement as we continue. Last question. What is the importance of Christ Jesus in our daily lives, in our daily living? What is the importance of Christ Jesus in our daily living? Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. This is to answer the last question. I hope you have seen where we all began, who Christ is, to why he came. Now we want to finish up with what is his importance in our daily living. Like mbona Christ kila siku. Manzi Christ hakuna vile naweza paratu Christ version 2.0 in my heart na niache na history kabisa. There is nothing like that. You have to walk with him. Sawa sawa. Let's see why. Colossians um Colossians chapter chapter 1 verse uh, verse verse 13 and 14 say, 14 and says that in says who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has trans, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins verse 14 again in whom we have the have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of so what do we have one we have in whom we have the redemption through his blood you cannot always is itenganisha they go hand in hand we have redemption because of his blood sawa sawa and the next thing that we have um is that even the forgiveness of sins if you are if you're here unafikiria manzi kuna sin fulani na jua god alinikasirikia this is your verse in whom we have the redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins he was seen was forgiven. Sawa sawa. It was forgiven. You just need to do and to apply what God says afterwards for the healing process to begin. And it's going to itakuja na itaisha. Sawa sawa. Um so we're going to look at uh, three things here. So we're going to have them in point form. Um the importance of Christ Jesus in our daily living. Uh, number one, We have boldness and access with confidence. 
that is the first reason as to all this. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, media team, Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1. Um, let's, let's begin at verse 5. It says, Having predestined us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to good pleasure of his will, to the presence of the glory of his grace, in which he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through, the, through his blood, uh, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Um, as you continue, verse 8 says, which he has abounded towards, towards us in all wisdom and prudence. So we see again that it is through the redemption of his blood and the forgiveness of our sins, and then adding something else according to the riches of his grace. So, so, uh, so we are going uh, to read the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 to 20. As I conclude, I'm going to conclude with this. Um, these are the last points that I'll be sharing. So Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 to 20. Uh, let, allow me to read. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Therefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to the strengthening with his might by his spirit in the inner man. So the first thing that we said is that... Um, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence. To whom? That's the question. But you have to understand that first of all, we have been given boldness and confidence. Like when you are in Christ Jesus and you have faith, having faith in Christ Jesus, you have to realize that you have confidence and boldness. Sao, sao. And we're going to be answering this and looking into it uh, deeper in a few as we get to the third point. But I want you to, in point one is, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him, through Christ Jesus. As we continue, uh, second point, number two, verse, uh, we, as we read verse 16, this is the, our second point, it says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now this is very important for us because we need to understand that as we are living, we are living as a spirit man. As it says that a time shall come where the true servants of God shall worship him in truth and in spirit. We need to understand that our, our spirit man is very important in our lives. So the Bible says here in verse 16 that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Our strength comes from God, beloved. As long as you believed Christ Jesus his death and his resurrection. His strength only comes from his spirit. You might be feeling off with your flesh and stuff, but your spirit plays a very big role. Your spirit will affect your flesh. And when your spirit is being strengthened by the spirit of God, that strength cannot be taken away from you. Abasi ile designer tunezeka unezeka I don't know how it happens, but this is not the thing. Ata ukai next to an unbeliever, ukai next to an atheist, ukai next to, to who and who, if the Spirit of God strengthens your inner man, they will not throw it away. It is yours and yours alone. This is a good place to say amen. You need to understand that it, does not, it is not about the things of outside. It's not about the environment. It is about, about the inside environment. What is inside of you? If the Spirit of God has blessed you, who can take it away? No one. It says that the blessings of God are a death no sorrow. If he gives you, he gives you. Peace comes with it. Attributes are God's and blessings are God. So this is also to tell you the things that you are getting, if they are good things and problems, you need to really question them. So, so, we need to be very practical in life. Ah, yeah. Second point, uh, verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth 
and the height. This is concerning his love. So it's as you live daily, as you live daily in your life, you need to remember that first of all, Ilianza, is about strengthening our inner man with his spirit. Sasa, second part, it comes to a place that we first have understood that we are loved, and now we can love. And not seek love in a designer. Hey, manzina penda um seek us abolin fanya hi na hi na hi. No. It is generated from a different place. Different place, deep inside your spirit. Everything is developed from a different, because you know what Christ has done for you. Because you know that these are the things that he has given the saints. Because you know that this is your own. Sawa, sawa. Our love na condition, ni uncondition. Yes, you may not feel like it, but you have to. Sawa, sawa. Ata wame ume ukiona ukiyo na white kicks. Eh, ata yeye. You have to forget. Ata kama mefaya marambili ya marat. You have to do it. Aneza kwa maybe ya kwa clumsy. And maybe na kwa clumsy to ukiyo around. But ni sawa. You need to... You need to forgive, you need to love these people. Sawa, sawa. Because you have understood the length, the depth, the height, and the width of his love. And it resides in you. This is something that Christ has given us. We go to the last point. Verse 19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all fullness of God. Now, all these things are happening so that we can actually get to this point. That you may be filled with all fullness of who? Of God. Like fullness ya God ineza duel kwako. Fullness ya God ineza onekana. Mse ineza kucheki tu hivi vinyo unaingena. Ukifungwa tu hivi mdomo and how you act. They can immediately get and understand. Who mse ameokoka. Na haja wakoka kwa sabu ya watu. Ameokoka kwa sabu wanataka. Like somebody can feel it. You can, you can disrupt the environment by just how you are. Because the presence of God is with you. And ha- the fullness of God himself is inside you. Si ile akiburi ati nasoma ati ndo nijeze kusumama mbele wa se. Ni ile manze God sina mbele wa lanyuma. You see how Christ says in the book of John chapter 15. He says, abide in me and I abide in you. Sindio? And then he says that ask for anything and you shall receive. And then again he goes ahead and says, it is such a point-blank statement that Christ says. And he says it well. An, 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 you can do nothing without me. It is so blunt, yani, as in a jashuga quote kitu yoyote. Like everything we have done, excluding Christ, that's nothing. I'll repeat it again. Everything we have done, except with Christ, we have done nothing. We can do nothing without him. And I want us to remember that and to keep it in our hearts even as we start a new week. The last point. Uh, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 14. Point number four. Uh, as I to remember Lisa. The next uh, maybe t- uh, seven minutes I'll be out of this place. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 and 16. King James version again. You remember the first point that we said you've been go- we've gotten boldness and confidence. In here, let us see for what reason. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, let's read again. Uh, Let's read together. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. So, to we we, we, we come, we we talked about boldness and confidence in you. And here we are shown that let us therefore come boldly unto what? Unto what? The throne of grace. Now this access was given because of our high priest. No one could have ever gotten to this point. But all of us have that access because of Christ Jesus. Because of our high priest. No one else. Christ says in his word in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. That I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one goes to the father except through him. 
That is what is being communicated here. That it is only with Christ Jesus that you can walk confidently and boldly into the throne of grace. Minus Christ, the throne of grace is a strange story in your life. Let us finalize it with this. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God amekufikiria na amenifikiria even before anything happens. Before anything ever happened, I'm shani fikiria. The fact that in the throne of, throne of grace with boldness and confidence, in the throne of grace ni mengia, we are going to find one thing. We are going to find what? We are going to first of all obtain what? Obtain mercy. We are going to obtain mercy from God. Mercy ya God ni mercy ya ukweli. If you want to a clear picture about what God's mercy is, read the, board, the story about Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 to cha, Jonah chapter 3 shows you the mercy of God. Manze Jonah kwa zile za, manze God ni najua ni kia na ukule, utawa forgive. Jonah being righteous, we might say, him living the standards, with the standards of God as, a, as a, a descendants of Abraham. Him living all that lifestyle. Ameishio lifestyle na najua, manze ni kia, natu pala ni wambia tu, manze God amesema hivi na hivi na hivi, what I repent. Na hawa jama by the way, told by the Bible that they never knew God. And that is exactly what happens. That is the mercy of God. Manzi, mercy of God ni crazy. We need to understand it. We have something that we have been given as believers. Something that we can hold and hold dear. This is a privilege that not everyone is given to. Mercy of God. That is the first thing. We obtain mercy. And I want you to understand that after this obtaining of mercy, something else follows. And it says, God already thought about me. And find grace to help in the time of need. Now, I don't know what is your need right now, but first of all, if you walk in confidence to the throne of grace, if you walk in confidence to the throne of grace, you are going to obtain mercy as the first thing. And then you're going to find grace that is going to help you in the time of need. This is the time of your need. Right now, God already thought about it. And the devil is the one who tricks us into thinking that there is no hope. There is, believers. It was strategically made possible by God. Sawa, sawa. So we have four points. We have bold, boldness and access with confidence, number two. Uh, number two, what have we said in the book of Ephesians? Mnaniambia ninajifunza. Ephesians chapter, chapter 3, what have you said? Um, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Then number 3, we have been grounded in the love. So we understand this love. This love has been done unto us. Then number 4, uh, no, sorry, number, that was number 2. Number 3, or oh, number 3, now this is number 3. Um, we have the, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that we might be filled with the fullness of of God. And now the last thing that we have looked at is that we have been given access to what? To the throne of grace. With what? Boldness. Unajua mtu mbold? Si mnajua watu wa bold? Sazine tunandikanga how to walk boldly in an interview to get a job. You know how a bold person is? A bold person is somebody who knows himself. Now answering the question. The question we began with is who is Christ? Now this answers who you are. This is your identity. We have answered our identity by knowing who Christ is. Because it is because of him. Now you remember the first verse that we began with in the book of Colossians. Everything followed. You can only get your identity when you know who Christ is. That if you are searching for identity, personality test, and all those things, those are the works of men. Now let me finish my statement. Remember this statement? We are constantly being bombarded left, right, and center with people who are trying in life. These people who are trying in life, you are trying to do it. You are trying to do it. You are trying to do it. You are trying to do philosophies, you are trying things that look so good. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, it does a very good exposition about it. Now, these are the people that we are talking about. One thing that is common with all these people, and correct me if I'm wrong, all these people will die. Now, let's finish this statement. But there is that one person who did not just live, but he did it and finished it. And he's our high priest. That one person makes all the difference. You do not need anyone if you have Christ. If you're thinking about how to get forward in life, 
Christ Jesus. If you are thinking about how to have peace in life, Christ Jesus. You're a single brother, single sister, seeking the face of God. Everybody is being married left, right, and center. Where uko wapo kwa committee kaa zote hazi kupiti? Answer ni moja, Christ Jesus. I'm telling you one thing. If you stand by the words of God, if, he fa- if you fail, he fails. And you know one thing, God has never failed. He will never fail, and he cannot fail. For he says, Numbers chapter 23, as you close your Bibles, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, says that, uh, media, Numbers chapter 23, uh, verse 19, King James Version, Bado. Let me open so that I don't skip a thing. Numbers chapter 19, Mwenye akwabotu kukuja kuendelea after mimi anze kujitayarisha. I'm done. Uh, Numbers chapter 19 verse... Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, sorry. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man. We began here. I want to finish with it. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Now. Timing and everything near God. Watch on a plan A, plan B, na plan C. In case plan A kose kuwak, plan B ita wak. Plan B kose kuwak, plan C ita wak. All those plans are not your, are not God's plans. Those, those are your plans. The Bible will say, plan and give it to God, and He shall establish. When God is part of it, He is confident to finish that which He began. Ephesians chapter one verse six. Yeni amianza atamaliza. Christ began and it ended with us being praised, with us being not praised, with us being justified. He crushed his son, but we see at the end of it all, it's a beautiful thing. Everything God crushes brings something beautiful. You need to trust in God. If you do not trust in him, you will trust in men, and men will always change their minds. Don't be shocked. It is the thing that we have inside. Last minute, Because a man changed their mind. But it's possible for us. It is possible for us. But if God is in that business, other devil could tricks gani. Nothing will stop him from completing his word. Because he has sword on his word. Sawa sawa? I'd like, us to inv- I'd like to invite us in prayer. Mighty and everlasting Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, we thank you and we bless your name, Father God. King Jesus, we know of one thing, that you are the truth. We know of one thing, that you are supreme. We know of one thing, that you are sovereign. We know of one thing, Father God, that you did it all because you loved us and because you wanted us together, Father. Father, for there is a reason and there is a purpose for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us, Father God, you brought into this life for a reason and for a purpose. And Lord God, I pray, Father God, for those people who are looking for their purpose uh, in this life, Father God, that they shall find their purpose inside of you, Father God, for you are the source, Lord. And if there is anyone, Father God, who's looking for your will, dear Lord God Almighty, let them be guided by your scripture, dear Lord God Almighty, for the only way we can actually get what your perfect, pleasing, and good, and acceptable will is is by us giving ourselves as a living sacrifice, Father God, first of all. And Lord God Almighty, also understanding that we are constantly supposed to be renewing our minds for us to be transformed. Continue cleansing us, Father God. Continue sanctifying us, dear Lord God Almighty. As we continue meditating on your word, Father God, let us continually look like you, Father. Father, it is not about the, the accolades of men. It's not about the eyes of men. It is not about the offices that shall be built. It is not about us living a legacy in this life, Father God. If it is outside you, Father God, it is nothing. And Lord God Almighty, we are standing in your word, standing by faith, not, not removing Christ from the equation, but understanding and knowing Christ. For you say that we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. And coming into the throne of your grace, Lord God Almighty, as we obtain mercy for the God, as we find grace for the time of need, we shall remember, yes, Lord, you promised in your word, and you shall never fail us, because you have sword it on your words, Father. You have said that you're not a man to change your mind, and you're not a human being 
to lie, Father God. You have said it and you have put it into plain text, Father God. You have said that we, Father God, we who trust in you are blessed, Father God. That is what we want to do and to stay in, dear Lord God Almighty. Father God, under the voice, under my voice, dear Lord God Almighty, as we listening to you, listened to your word, Father God, and even as we pray, Father God, I pray that that blessing, Father God, that was to come from me to them, dear Lord God Almighty, and also for me, dear Lord God Almighty, that shall not be snatched away, Father God. That these words, Father God, shall land into our hearts and in our minds, Father God, and we shall continually practice them each and every single day. And Father God, at the end of it all, Father God, it is me imitating you as we are pointing to you, Father. It is the idea of you or us maturing to becoming like Christ. And Lord God Almighty, that is our number one goal. Let it be our priority in this week to come and the weeks to come, dear Lord God Almighty, that we shall look unto you and run to you, Father God, making you the first priority in our lives. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for the privilege that we can speak to you, Father God, in prayer. And you will listen to us, Father God. For that is a rare privilege that you have given us as your children. And so, Lord, I thank you and I bless your name. For it's the mighty name of Jesus we do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. Thank you so much.